This is your Barbados Today morning news update for January 10. With just nine days to go, the election campaign is heating up. Prime Minister Mia Motley last night declared that the choice is clear, telling Barbadians they cannot be reckless with the country's future. And it worries me that what we have parading as a party asking you for the vote is nothing but a collection of people otherwise known as a political pillow. A little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this. A political one, two, three. At the very time when your country is facing its greatest peril. What manner of madness is this? She strongly defended her government's track record, pointing to achievements and policies outlined in the party's manifesto, released on Saturday. We have come to you with a manifesto that I have spoken yesterday with a number of our people that you can read and that you have heard from this platform. It speaks to core values of transformation. It speaks to drivers of national transformation. It speaks to changing a Victorian approach that is about lock up and lock up. It speaks about changing the disproportionate relationship between who got medical insurance and who don't got and why you should be able to get it in this country and why you should be able to have fairness when you get it. It speaks about giving you a chance to own piece of the rock. It speaks about easing your cost of living by taking personal care items and taking a vat off of them. But the leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, Bishop Joseph Avali, insists that Barbadians must not return all 30 BLP candidates to the House of Assembly. In a recorded statement, the former opposition leader made it clear Barbados must reject a call by Prime Minister Mia Motley for one-partyism. As leader of the opposition, and of course as political leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, I really do decry the Prime Minister's call for Barbadians to give the Barbados Labour Party all 30 seats in the House of Assembly in the next election. This is now a call repeated by the Prime Minister. It's not the first time. So it seems an urgent matter for her. Indeed, her seeming even plaintive cry of recent hours on this matter suggests indeed it is an urgent matter which perhaps reflects a fear on her part that the party in the office of government today will not do as well as she and others may have anticipated in the upcoming general elections. On the DLP platform, President Verla de Pisa rubbished the Prime Minister's claims that Barbadians were voting for an opposition. Speaking at the national meeting at Haggett Hall last evening, De Pisa said her party isn't campaigning to form an opposition, but rather it is ready to take the reins of leadership. And I don't have to tell you about the mistake of 2018 because we are living in a time and we are watching things happen to suggest that we must never do that again. I am not falling either for the talk about voting in an opposition unless you're talking about the other side. I'm not playing for second place. And seeing all of you come out tonight, I am satisfied that you are not playing for second place. In more news from the campaign trail, the Barbados Labour Party is promising a new deal for tourism and hospitality workers if re-elected to government. Minister of Tourism Lisa Cummings said hospitality workers can expect additional training and additional support toward childcare services. There is a new deal for workers, a new deal for workers in the tourism sector. When people work all night, sometimes they work a double shift. You have children? I have children, we know what it is sometimes as guardians, as parents, as aunts, as uncles, and as grandparents to work in a sector where you have to work a shift. 
all around the world, you have companies that have childcare facilities on the spot where you are able to go to work and be comfortable that your child is right there on the ground. We, as a Barbados Labour Party, intend to introduce a new deal for tourism workers to and ensure that they are able to benefit from training, upskilling, and the provision of their most basic needs, support, and care for their children in their workplace where possible. And we intend to make sure that people feel as though they have a vested stake in this tourism industry. A vote for the Barbados Labour Party is a vote for workers' rights. So declared BLP candidate for St. George North, Tony Moore, at Sunday's mega manifesto meeting. She made it clear that the BLP is committed to improving the plight of the working class people and it will roll out a slew of policies in their interests. In 2022, as I stand here before you on January the 9th, the trade unions still don't have formalized trade union processes. So that when a union wants to get involved to represent working class people, there's no clear automatic way of determining how that recognition is going to go. Rights matter. And in this Barbados Labor Party, the Barbados Workers Union is proud that in a matter of months, we would finally be rolling out a trade union recognition bill. A bill that will bring security to workers who want to join a trade union and for whom at this time, joining that trade union could be iffy sometimes because that's the very time you lose your job when people see that you're trying to have representation. Meanwhile, the Democratic Labour Party candidate for St. James West Central, Curtis Cave, is concerned about what he says is high youth unemployment. The first-time candidate says if elected in the upcoming poll, he will be aiming to find suitable opportunities for young people. Youth unemployment is, is high in the young people. A lot of young persons are unemployed. We have a situation with the cost of living. Um, a lot of persons, even outside of the youth, are still unemployed even after COVID and stuff is picking back up. A lot of young persons and persons generally throughout the constituency can't pay bills, they've been on paycheck to paycheck. There's no real ease. You have the increasing water rates, you have the increasing utilities, um, fuel, um, bus fares. The Democratic Labour Party candidate for St. Michael's South Central, Richard Seeley, has voiced concern about what he says is a rapid slide away from the traditional Barbadian norms and values under the Mia Motley administration. His comments came on Saturday night as he staged a virtual gospel concert and constituency meeting in support of his bid to regain the seat he lost in the May 2018 general election. I maintain that that also calls for a look at our values and those of us who see this kind of intolerant and lack of inclusiveness on the part of our political leadership are the ones who I think are a little fed up working so hard the salt of the earth barbarians and they th think that we can do better and I agree that we can do better and I'm prepared to be part of that effort to change this kind of behavior. And I want to say that uh, yes, I am a Christian and I'm very comfortable in this environment with my fellow Christians, but I understand tolerance of all religious persuasions, but I will not accept that we need to denigrate those traditional Christian values that have served this country well. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 
95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings in Jamaica, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the time is now to laud the vaccinated and frown upon the unvaccinated. He made the comments as the country recorded a historic near 1,300 new cases of the coronavirus on Thursday, beating the previous high of 1,100 new cases on Wednesday. We get the details from CVM Television. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the time is now to frown upon the unvaccinated. He notes there are disadvantages placed on the vaccinated by the many who are not vaccinated. Low vaccination rates affect productivity in the country. This high level of positivity has impacted work flow and work participation. It affects hospitalization. And in a case where you have low numbers of beds, you have to adjust priorities. On the international front, India has reported nearly 160,000 COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. It's the highest number in seven months. We get more on this report from Al Jazeera. Usually bustling with shoppers, markets in New Delhi emptied as the weekend curfew started. Most of the capital shut down as the number of daily COVID-19 infections reached a seven-month high. The new curbs followed the city imposing a night curfew as well as closing schools, gyms and cinemas a few weeks ago. I am most scared of the lockdown because we can't leave our homes. For students like me, who recently graduated, it's been very difficult to get a job. People who have recently lost their job are also looking for jobs, but in vain. It's very frustrating. As infections surge nationwide, other states have tightened restrictions. Karnataka in southern India is imposing a curfew for the next two weekends. And Sunday lockdowns are planned in Tamil Nadu. Maharashtra, which is India's hardest hit state, will have a night curfew. Schools and colleges have already been closed for a month, as have gyms and salons. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbilistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.